Rise up, O Lord, placed his hand on the girl and said, Rise up. The hand of God is the Holy Spirit. All works are performed by warmth, for if the fiery love of God grows cold in the soul, the soul will die. And if God is to act in the soul, then God must be united with her. If the soul is to be united with God, she must be separate from all things, and must be as solitary as God is solitary. A work which God performs in an empty soul is more precious than heaven and earth. It is for this that God created the soul, that she be united with him. One of the saints says that the soul is created from nothing, and that God created her himself, with no one else present. Had anyone else been present, God would have been afraid that the soul might be drawn to them and not to himself. Therefore, the soul must be alone, as God is alone. Spiritual things and physical things cannot be united with each other. If divine perfection is to reign in the soul, then the soul must be spirit, as God is spirit. And if God wishes to bestow gifts on the soul, in the soul, then he can only do so with restraint. Therefore, it is in himself that he takes her into himself, and in this way she is united with him. Let me give you an analogy. When fire and stone unite, both being material and stone often remains cool on account of its inner destiny, the same is true of air and light. Whatever you see in air, you see in the sun. But since they are both material, there is more light in a whole mile than there is in a half, and more in a half a mile than there is in a house. But the closest parallel that we can find is that of body and soul. These are so united with each other that the body cannot act without the soul, nor the soul without the body. God is to the soul as the soul is to the body. And when the soul departs from the body, the body must die. So too must the soul die if God departs from her. There are three obstacles which hinder the union of the soul with God. The first is that she is too scattered and is not unified in herself, since the soul is never unified when she inclines to creatures. The second is that she mixed with temporal things. The third is that when she turned to the body, she cannot be united with God. On the other hand, there are three things which further the union of God with the soul. The first is that the soul is unified and undivided. For if she is to be united with God, she must be simple as God is simple in himself. The second is that she is raised above herself and all transient things and holds to God. The third is that she is separated from all material things and acts from her primal and original purity. Augustine says, Of the free soul, if you do not desire me, I desire you. And if I desire you, then you do not desire me. When I seek you, you flee from me. As they return, all pure spirits take the same path back to the purity of God.